a warm welcome to you all. According to history, the Philippines was discovered by Ferdinand Magellan of Spain on March 16, 1521. There are so many things we can accuse Spain of, atrocities that made heroes of many Filipinos, including our own national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. However, there is something that we are most grateful to Spain for, our Christian faith, making us the pearl of the Orient, the only Catholic nation in that part of the world. That is what we are celebrating tonight. I am honored to introduce our MC for this evening, Nina Pineda a great friend of mine in the and of the Filipino-American community. She's an award-winning broadcast journalist with ABC TV in New York. She's best known for helping so many with, co with, cost with consumer problems on her program, Seven on Your Side. I'm sure you've seen her on Channel 7. So friends, let's welcome Nina Pineda. Thank you so much, Tita Angie. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. And I welcome our audience here in New York City, in New York, in the United States, in any country you happen to be joining us from. Maybe you're joining us in the Philippines and it is already the day to celebrate the very day of 500 years of Christianity. It, it, this is the way we communicate now. This is the way we come together. And we have a wonderful program put together for you tonight. Um, so sit back and relax. I know some of you may have been on a couple of Zoom meetings already today. And uh, this is going to be one that you enjoy as we all come together to celebrate our heritage. Um, as you know, uh, my father is from Pampanga. My mother is from the Visayas. I come to you via the way of being born in Minneapolis and raised in Pittsburgh. And now I uh, make my home uh, in New Jersey. And I also work, as Tita Angie said, for WABC TV in New York. This past Sunday, Pope Francis addressed the world uh, from, the, uh, from Mass in Rome. And he was joined by Cardinal Tagle yesterday morning. So tonight, we are proud to show some of the Holy Father with our own celebration and thanksgiving. Dio ha tanto amato il mondo da dare il Figlio unigenito. Qui c'è il cuore del Vangelo e qui c'è il fondamento della nostra gioia. Il contenuto del Vangelo, infatti, non è una idea o una dottrina. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Gesù, il Figlio che il Padre ci ha donato perché noi avessimo la vita. Gesù è il fondamento della nostra gioia. Non è una bella teoria su come essere felici, ma è sperimentare di essere accompagnati e amati nel cammino della vita. Ha tanto amato il mondo da dare il suo figlio. Soffermiamoci, fratelli e sorelle, un momento su questi due aspetti, ha tanto amato e ha dato. Prima di tutto, Dio ha tanto amato. Queste parole che Gesù rivolge a Nicodemo, un anziano giudeo che voleva conoscere il Maestro, ci aiutano a scorgere il vero volto di Dio. Egli da sempre ci ha guardati con amore e per amore è venuto in mezzo a noi nella carne del figlio suo. E lui ci è venuto a cercare nei luoghi in cui ci siamo smarriti. E lui è venuto a rialzarci dalle nostre cadute. E lui ha pianto le, no le nostre lacrime e guarito le nostre piaghe. In Lui ha benedetto per sempre la nostra vita. Chiunque crede in Lui, dice il Vangelo, non va perduto. 
In Gesù Dio ha pronunciato la parola definitiva sulla nostra vita. Tu non sei perduto, tu sei amato, sempre amato. Se l'ascolto del Vangelo e la pratica della nostra fede non ci allargano il cuore per farci cogliere la grandezza di questo amore e magari ci vogliamo in una religiosità seriosa, triste, chiusa, allora è segno che dobbiamo fermarci un po' e ascoltare di nuovo l'annuncio della buona notizia. Dio ti ama così tanto da darti tutta la sua vita. Non è un God so loved the world that he gave his only son. This is the heart of the gospel. This is the source of our joy. The message of the gospel is not an idea or a doctrine. It is Jesus himself, the Son of the Father, has given us so that we might have life. The source of our life is not an elegant theory, but how to find happiness, but the actual experience of being accompanied and loved throughout the journey of life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let us dwell on these two thoughts for a minute. God so loved and God gave. First of all, God so loved. Jesus' words to Nicodemus, a Jewish elder who wanted to know the master, help us to see the true face of God. He has always looked at us with love and for the sake of love. He came among us in the flesh of his Son. In Jesus, he went in search of us when we were lost. In Jesus, he came to raise us up when we fell. In Jesus, he wept with us and healed our wounds. In Jesus, he blessed our life forever. The Gospel tells us that whoever believes in him will not perish. In Jesus, God spoke the definitive word about our life. You are not lost. You are loved, loved forever. If hearing the gospel and practicing our faith don't enlarge our hearts and make us grasp the immensity of God's love, maybe because we prefer a glum, sorrowful, and self-absorbed religiosity, then this is a sign that we need to stop and listen again to the preaching of the good news. God loves you so much that he gave you his entire life. He is not a God who looks down upon us from on high, but a loving Father who becomes part of our history. He is not a God who takes pleasure in the death of sinners, but a Father concerned that no one should be lost. He is not a God who condemns, but a Father who saves us with the comforting embrace of his love. We now come to the second aspect, God gave his son. Precisely because he loves us so much, God gives himself. He offers us his life. Those who love always come out of themselves. Love always offers itself, gives itself, expends itself. This is the power of love. It shatters the shell of our selfishness, breaks out of our carefully constructed security zones, tears down walls and overcomes fears, so as to give freely of itself. That is how lovers are. They prefer to risk self-giving over self-preservation. And that is why God comes to us, because he loved us. His love is so great that we cannot fail to give himself to us. When the people were attacked by poisonous serpents in the desert, God told Moses to make the bronze serpent. In Jesus, however, exalted on the cross, he himself came to heal us of the venom of death. He became sin to save us from sin. God does not love us in words. He gives us his son, so that whoever looks at him and believes in him will be saved. The more we love, the more we become capable of giving. That is also the key to understanding our life. It is wonderful to meet people who love one another and share their lives in love. We can say about them what we say about God. They so love each other that they give their lives. It is not only what we can make or earn that matters. In the end, it is the love we are able to give. This is the source of joy. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Here we see the meaning of the church's invitation this Sunday. 
Rejoice, rejoice and be glad, you who mourn. Find contentment and consolation. I think of what we saw a week ago in Iraq, a people who had suffered so much rejoiced and were glad, thanks to God and his merciful love. Sometimes we look for joy where it is not to be found, in illusions that vanish, in dreams of glory, in the apparent security of material possessions, in the cult of our image. But life teaches us that true joy comes from realizing that we are loved gratuitously, knowing that we are not alone, having someone who shares our dreams, and who, when we experience shipwreck, is there to help us and lead us to a safe harbor. Sono passati 500 anni da quando per la prima volta l'annuncio cristiano è arrivato nelle Filippine. Avete ricevuto la gioia del Vangelo, che Dio ci ha amato a tal punto da dare il suo Figlio per noi. E questa gioia si vede nel nostro popolo. Dear brothers and sisters, 500 years have passed since the Christian message first arrived in the Philippines. You received the joy of the gospel, the good news that God so loved us that he gave his Son for us. And this joy is evident in your people. We see it in your eyes, on your faces, in your songs, and in your prayers. And he's saying your women are banners of joy here in Rome, because where they go to work, they work, but they sow the faith, men and women of you here in Rome. He, he said this is this is um, an illness that goes from one generation to the other, but it's a good illness that you need to pass on. It, it comes from the gift you received 500 years ago and that you bear even to today. You received the joy of the gospel, that, you, that God so loved the world that he gave his son. And this joy is evident in your people. We see it in your eyes, on your faces, in your songs, and in your prayers. I want to thank you for the joy you bring to the whole world and to our Christian communities. I recall the many beautiful experiences in families here in Rome, but also throughout the world, where your discreet and hardworking presence has become a testimony of faith, a witness of faith in Mary and Joseph's style. God loves to bring the joy of faith through humble, hidden, courageous, and persevering service. On this very important anniversary for God's holy people in the Philippines, I also want to urge you to persevere in the work of evangelization, which is not the same as proselytism. It's something else. The Christian proclamation that you have received is something that needs to be constantly brought to others. The gospel message of God's closeness cries out to be expressed in love for our brothers and sisters. God desires that no one perish. For this reason, he asks the church to care for those who are hurting and living on the fringes of life. God so loves us that he gives himself to us, and the church has this same mission. She is sent not to judge, but to welcome, not to impose, but to sow. The church is called not to condemn, but to bring Christ who is our salvation. I know that this is the pastoral program of your church, a missionary commitment that involves everyone and reaches everyone. Never be discouraged as you walk this path. 
Never be afraid to proclaim the gospel, to serve and to love. With your joy, you will help people to say of the church, too, she so loved the world. How beautiful and attractive is a church that loves the world without judging and a church that gives herself to the world. Dear brothers and sisters, I hope that it will be like this in the Philippines and in every part of the earth. That was a wonderful message from Pope Francis. And I believe we're not gonna hear from the Archbishop who also uh, spoke there in Rome alongside Pope Francis. And now Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle will greet the Holy Father on behalf of the Filipino community. Santo Padre, buongiorno. Holy Father, good morning. The Filipino migrants in Rome want to express our gratitude to you for leading us in this Eucharistic celebration in thanksgiving for the arrival of the Christian faith in the Philippines 500 years ago. We bring you here the filial love of the Filipinos in the 7,641 islands of our country. There are more than 10 million Filipino migrants living in almost 100 countries in the world. They are united with us this morning. We treasure your concern for us and for all migrants in Rome, constantly manifested by your vicar for the Diocese of Rome, His Eminence Cardinal Angelo De Donatis, and the Director of the Diocesan Office of Migrants, Monsignor Pier Paolo Felicolo, and the Scalabrinian Fathers, Father Baggio, and the chaplain of the Philippine Center, Father Ricky Gente. He's also thanking Father Gaston, um, who organizes the Philippine chaplains here in Italy. The coming of the Christian faith to our land is God's gift. The fact that the Christian faith was received by the majority of our people who gave it a Filipino character is also a gift of God. Now, the Philippines has the third largest number of Catholics in the world. This is truly God's gift. We attribute the enduring faith of the Filipino people only to God's love, mercy, and fidelity, not to any merit of our own. From 1521 to 2021, we have received gift upon gift. We thank God for the bearers of the gift throughout these 500 years, the pioneering missionaries, the religious congregations, the clergy, grandmothers and grandfathers, mothers and fathers, teachers, catechists, parishes, schools, hospitals, orphanages, farmers, laborers, artists, and the poor whose wealth is Jesus. The 
una fonte di speranza di fronte alla povertà, alla disuguaglianza. By God's grace, the Filipino Christians have continued to receive the faith, one of the sources of hope, in facing poverty, economic inequality, political upheavals, typhoons, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and even the current pandemic. As we confess our failures in living the faith in a consistent manner, we also recognize the great contribution of the Christian faith in shaping the Filipino culture and the Filipino nation. The gift must continue being a gift. It must be shared. If it is kept for itself, it ceases to be a gift. By God's mysterious design, the gift of faith we have received is now being shared by the millions of Christian Filipino migrants in different parts of the world. We have left our families not to abandon them, but to care for them and their future. For love of them, we endure the sorrow of separation. When lonely moments come, we, Filipino migrants, find strength in Jesus who journeys with us. The Jesus who became a child, Santo Nino, who is also known as the Nazarene, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Nazareno, who bore the cross for us. We are assured of the embrace of our Mother Mary and the protection of the saints. When we miss our families, we turn to the parish, our second home. When there is no one to talk with, we pour out our hearts to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and ponder his word. We take care of the children under our charge as if they were our own children and the elderly as our own parents. We sing, we smile, we laugh, we cry, and we eat. We pray that through our Filipino migrants, the name of Jesus, the beauty of the church, and the justice, mercy, and joy of God may reach the ends of the earth. Here in Rome, when we miss our grandparents, we know we have a Lolo Kiko. Thank you very much, Holy Father. Lolo Kiko, Mabuhay. What an extraordinary moment just to see Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle there with the Holy Father celebrating, I learned this word, the quincentenary, the quincentenary, 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Thank you for joining us, friends. Many of you have just come on to our Zoom, which was so graciously organized by Dr. Angie Cruz and others with the host committee who you'll hear from soon. Um, my name is Nina Pineda. I am a reporter with WABC TV and I'll be taking you on this wonderful journey celebrating our heritage. But I don't know about you um, and watching the Filipinos there in Rome. They, you just see how, the, even though they have masks on, how proud they were to celebrate this moment and have uh, Pope Francis and the Cardinal 
talk about the uh, the Philippines and and what it means to be Christians and celebrate this kin centenary. Uh, so let's now hear uh, from somebody uh, who could follow follow who could follow really uh, the Holy Father and the Cardinal, but Archbishop Gabriel Caccia. He is a permanent observer of the Holy See to the UN here in New York. And prior, he was apost apost apostolic nuncio to the Philippines. And because of that connection, we asked him to prepare some words, which he happily did, which he focused on the 500th anniversary of the first mass in Philippines. He recorded this message this morning since he knew that some may be watching from the Philippines. So here is Archbishop Katya. Magandang gumaga sa inyong lahat. It gives me great joy to be with you this morning to celebrate together with you and all the Filipinos here in the States and in the world this uh, upcoming event, the fifth centenary of the arrival of Christianity in the land of the Philippines. It was a Sunday, it was Easter Sunday, 13th of March, 1521, when the first Mass was celebrated in Limazawa. And so, remembering that event, we are sharing together the community all over the world this important moment. I know that some think that Christianity came from Europe. It expanded in the past century mainly through European supremacy. It arrived with Spain in your land. But this is not the whole truth. Prior to being appointed to your country as Apostolic Nuncio, I was assigned to Lebanon in the Middle East for eight years. I was surprised by the pride of these ancient Eastern churches that repeatedly stressed that Christianity started there with the incarnation of the Lord Jesus and afterward spread on all, all the parts of the empire. It was through charity, witness, martyrdom that the early Christians attracted to Christianity many peoples, not by force, and they expanded beyond the border of the Roman Empire. We believe that the message of God is for all cultures, languages, and races. It's not a patrimony of a single nation or a continent. We believe that we proclaim and offer what not is imposed by one culture, but something which is given and help to bring joy and peace, truth and meaning and love. In this sense, missionary work is not propaganda, but is a sharing of a gift received. This is something we should be aware, especially in sharing our Christian faith and identity in the context of old and respected cultures present in the Asian region. The freshness of the new Asian churches like yours also help the West to separate what is authentic Christianity from a decadent and self-sufficient uh, way of intending the greatness that was based on this value and sometimes now is lost. Gifted to give. We have received a gift. We are called to give with joy and with mercy. In this context, the best way to express our joy is to thank the Father, to thank all those who have given us this light. And we now so pray together in a moment of silence, together with all the people of goodwill, so that we become and are truly missionaries. Missio ad gentes. We make a moment of silence.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, renew in us the grace of your Spirit that impels us to be witness of Jesus, your Son, in a world broken by greed, violence, injustice, sickness, and suffering. May our faith bring us to unity as your children to care for and love one another. May the Holy Spirit empower us to be proclaimers of the good news to our brothers and sisters in Asia and to all nations. Give us the sincere desire to help others to come to faith in the Lord Jesus, to share your joy and life. May the Blessed Mother, star of evangelization, accompany us and pray for us as we live and share our faith with others. May our strong love and devotion to her as our Mahal Naina form us to be true disciples and witness of Jesus to all, always ready to be sent and to be obedient to whatever Jesus asks of us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and best wishes for your jubilee. God bless you. Thank you so much. That was the Archbishop. That's Pope Francis's representative at the UN, Archbishop Gabriel Caccia. And now since Spain brought Christianity to our shores, we would like to introduce Archbishop Bernadito Alza. Originally from the Philippines, he is presently the Apostolic Nuncio to Spain and Andorra. And in spite of his very busy schedule, he sent this message for our Jubilee. Dear brothers and sisters, dear Angie and friends, uh, thank you for inviting me to give a short message as a contribution to your celebration of the fifth uh, centenary of uh, the evangelization of the Philippines, the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines, which also means the fifth centenary of the celebration of the first mass in the Philippines, and of course the fifth centenary of, uh, of the, uh, the first circumnavigation in the world. So I'm sending you greetings uh, from uh, Spain. I will be spending the next three days, uh, these days in Andalusia. And you can see here the map behind us. That's where Sevilla is. That's where Magellan left in 1519 and arrived in the Philippines in 1521, almost two years, a year and a half after. So that's Sevilla and that's the river Guadalquivir. And this is uh, San Lucar de Barameda where we might say we left uh, for the deep blue sea, the, the Atlantic Ocean, because this is the first time that uh, the, uh, the, the road to the Spice Islands back in our country, the Philippines, and of course, uh, Indonesia, that was the first uh, trip through a Western passage. So uh, my dear friends, uh, thank you for uh, all the prayers and all the thanksgiving to God for this wonderful gift of our faith which arrived on our shores 500 years ago. So this is where all it started. And uh, the king who sent uh, Magellan, who commissioned Magellan, who paid for almost everything, was Charles I, who was the grandson of Isabella Catolica over here. So uh, it's, uh, I find it really pleasing to, to greet you all and to wish you best celebrations for the centenaries from Spain where it all began. And uh, you know, you know, you know, William A. in his song, you know, the Philippine history, and that Magellan was killed in Cebu by Lapu Lapu, not the fish, but the chieftain of the tribe in Mactan. Well, that's part of our history. But uh, for, for what is important really for us uh, these days as we celebrate is the start of the evangelization, the arrival of our faith in our shores. It all happened 500 years ago. And that's what we celebrate 
today. As Yoyo Villame also sings, so Magellan arrived in Cebu and he was met by the local chieftain, Raja Humabon, and his wife, later baptized as Queen Juana. And uh, as you said, you know, all people were baptized and built the Church of Christ. And that's the beginning of our Catholic life. You know, Yoyo is very funny, but everything is there. We celebrate the beginning of our Catholic life. And there is nothing more central in our Catholic life than the Holy Mass. And that's why it's also a central point of our celebrations. Celebrate and thank God for the 500 years since the first celebration of the Mass in our shores. 500 years, as St. John Paul II said in Manila, you know, 1995, uh, we celebrated the fourth centenary of the foundation of the Archdiocese of Manila. So the Pope was there also for the World Youth Day. And in that uh, occasion, he said, you know, all these years, 500 years almost at the time of evangelization has borne fruit in every aspect of our life as a people, as a country, and as a people of God. So thank you also for your prayers for Spain, as we know that there are some crisis here and there, vocations and uh, all these things, but we know that everything, as St. Paul says, will go well for all those who love the Lord. Thank you, congratulations, and God bless. I think we should do a pilgrimage to, to where um, the Archbishop was, south of Spain. Remember, travel everybody, remember just picking someplace wonderful to go? When he pointed that out on the map, I said, how wonderful would it be to be in Andalusia right now? We can't be there, but we can have some wonderful music from around the world. And joining us is Ryan Kayabia, the national artist of music in the Philippines who received a papal award from Pope Francis. And he was presented gifting, gifted to give. It is a song that he composed in 2012 in preparation just for this moment, 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. The song is in English, Spanish, and Cebuano, which is a Philippine dialect in the Visayas. So let's have a little musical interlude now from Ryan. Hello, everybody. This is Ryan Kebyab, and I'd like to uh, greet you a great, a pleasant evening and uh, congratulate everybody for celebrating the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. And in 2012, I wrote this song in preparation for this celebration for the 500th quincentennial, quincentennial uh, celebration of Christianity in the Philippines. And uh, now um, we sing this in church and to celebrate the joy of having been blessed by uh, Christianity in our country. We are blessed, blessed a hundredfold, the cross of Jesus Christ in our Asian shores is now 500 years a cherished gift to hold he has given us faith a gift to love and to share esta fe Transmission a todos los que sufren, traemos salvación a todo el mundo, compartir su compasión a toda la humanidad, llamamos a la conversión. Tayo y may 
Happy 500 years, everybody. 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Woo, that was fantastic. Oh my gosh, Ryan Kayabiab. You know, he, he's a musician, composer, conductor. He was a, the artistic director for the San Miguel Foundation for the Performing Arts and really a national treasure and hero. He was uh, the national artist of the Philippines that nominated in 2018. What a wonderful song. And, 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 and what a great get for our program. Uh, for those of you who are joining us, we have a wonderful program put together. We already heard from the Pope, a Cardinal and Archbishop, two of them, and it's just getting better. Um, we have more music performances for you and of course some live guests coming up. Um, but let's visit now the Sartorio de, de San Antonio in Forbes Park where Father Balthazar Obico, a Franciscan friar will join us. He is the guardian in their pastoral team. He had to go on a mission at the last minute, but sent us this wonderful message video for our quincentenary. The Franciscans arrived in the Philippines in July 2, 1578, the second religious group that came to the country upon invitation of the first group, the Augustinians. They initially settled for a month in the Augustinian convent and after a house, they built their own convent of Nita House and Church in the same compound of Intramuros. They were assigned to work in Santa Ana, Pandacan, Paco, and they have used San Francisco del Monte as their house of retreat. They were also asked to evangelize practically the southern region, the Bicol, and to a certain extent, part of the Visayas called Leyte and Samar, Laguna, of course, Tayabas, Batangas, Cavite, and the rest of the Bicol region. There are about 273 priors who have worked and established 200. 23 parishes, but aside from establishing towns and parishes, of course, concomitant with that evangelizing service would be the building of roads, building of towns, building of bridges and dams and tunnels. 
But apart from running, administrating, administering parishes, they also have some char charitable institutions. For example, they built the San Lazaro House, the first ever Asian house or Asian hospital for lepers. We have also built the San Juan de Dios Hospital, which is concurrently still existing. But apart from that, we have hospitals in Naga and in Los Baños. Apart from hospitals and other chargeable institutions, lo and behold, the priors also built the first water system in Manila, the Rawasa, or runner of Rawasa, the so-called Carriedo Fountain, you remember, is somewhere in Nagtahan and Santa Mesa, that was built by Pelix de Huertas. Apart from the water system in Owasa, we have also built a cooperative. To a certain extent, we still found it today, the so-called Monte de Piedad or Obres Pia. It is extending loans to small farmers. That's how close the friars are to the poor. But after the end of the Spanish era in 1898, only 70 friars were left for some American Masonic reasons that they have to erase the colonial vestiges of the Spanish Christianity or Catholicism. So we were left with only 23 friars out of the 275 friars. And they mostly give up their parishes to the diocesan clergy. After the post-colonial era, sometime in 1950s, uh, the different bishops invited a lot of different Franciscan entities, one from Italy, one or I think four of them are the United States, one from New York, Wisconsin, California, and Ohio. They all work here in different palaces like Biliran, Cagayan, and Biliran, Cagayan, and Samar, and Leyte. After that, the 1951, you may ask, why are the Franciscans here in Makati? Considering that the Franciscans who arrived here carried with them the spirit of St. Francis through St. Peter of Alcantara, the so-called Alcantarian reform. The Alcantarian reform is associated with poverty and prayer. Why are the Franciscans here in Forbes? We were invited here by the Alala and has given us two hectares. But at the moment, we have always looked at Forbes Park as a bridge between the, to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. For example, aside from our Paris outreaches program in jails and hospitals, this Paris is also the source of funding for most of our mission areas, whether it is in the remote areas of Isabela or in the depressed area in Metro Manila, like the Gatagatan. In fact, in a recent fundraising, the Gatagatan uh, church, which is being currently being built now is financed by the generosity of the people. In that sense, our vision is we want to liberate the poor from their need. But at the same time, we want to liberate the rich from their greed. And this place is the bridge that reconciles the gap between the rich and the poor. But I forget, even before, the, uh, uh, during this Paris area, the priors have a lot of contributions in the area of culture, not only in char charitable institutions, the preservation of the Tagalog language and the Bicol dialect. We have translated and we have dictionaries penned by Franciscans of Tagalog and Spanish, Bicol and Spanish. Even in the area of arts, of course, music and making a musical instrument. The invention of the machine for abaca in Biko, the extraction of the fiber, we owe it also to the friars. 
And lo and behold, you would not, perhaps you'll be surprised to know that even wood carving in Paite and the weaving and embroidery in Lumbang, famous for their bottom Tagalog, is established or started by the friars. So our evangelization as religious community does not only preach, we do not, we did not only preach the gospel, but we attend to very humanistic human needs of the people, which is their livelihood, their credit system, their water, roads, and villages. This is the Franciscans in the last 500 years. However, in a development, we were now divided into two entities, one for Luzon and one for Visayas. Thank you. I'm so glad to see everybody. That was a wonderful message from, uh, from uh, Father Obiko. And for those of you who are new to Zoom, you don't have to look at me or the person who's speaking. It's sometimes fun to see who else is here. Um, and you can take your finger and just swipe it across your screen or put it on a different view that says gallery at the top. You can see, you could put it on gallery and then you can look through and see everybody, what they're wearing, what their background looks like. Hi, Jerry. You, hi, Tita Loida. You can say hi to people because <laughs> now we're coming to our live part and uh, with a wonderful bookish background, with, which definitely get big accolades on uh, Good Morning America, uh, is Father Joseph Marabe with his beautiful bookshelves behind him. He is the director of the Filipino Apostolate of the New York Archdiocese and presently the parochial vicar of St. Michael's Church in Manhattan. And he is live with us. Hello, Father Marabe. Hello. God is the primal evangelizer. In the beginning of time, God expressed the good news to the void and it became creation. The word was announced to a virgin and it became incarnation. He uttered the word on the cross and it became salvation. In many ways and in different times, the word himself spoke to the peoples. And finally in Christ, the word started Christianization. For one, evangelization is not only about sowing the seeds as it is about harvesting the fruits. When the first missionaries planted the inverted sword on the Isles of Horses, Felipe is the name, meaning lover of horses, although we do not have horses in the Philippines except in Santa Ana, race trap. They found not only spices and gold, but the natural values of friendship, sense of divine in the people. In spite of the sword and arquebuses of the soldiers, the pater familias in Cebu, the chieftain, embraced Christianity with his family without bloodletting and subjugation force. They gladly exchanged their anitos with the niño it was because those primordial seeds from the granaries of eternity were already growing in the consciousness of the natives. We can say they were already Christians before they were Christianized. In the same way, we cannot say they were discovered by the colonizers because they were already there before they came. In celebrating, therefore, the much vaunted Spanish conquest by the cross and the sword, we should rather be filled with humble gratitude to God's bounty 
for spreading the eternal word through the, our land with the help of the heroic efforts of missionaries then as now, together with strong commitment to help the germination process, already irrigated with the blood of our two Kababayan martyrs, Lorenzo Ruiz and Pedro Calonso, Sanguis Martyrum, the fathers of the church say, Semen Christianorum, the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christianity. These seeds of faith will grow to maturity and joyful fruition as showcased in the 500th anniversary mass presided by the Pope with the Filipinos. Friends may greet you in retrospect in the way St. Pope John Paul II greeted me in a synod in Rome. And I would say this same greeting to you. God bless the Philippines. Thank you very much, Father Maravi. So nice to hear from you. Uh, we have another musical, wonderful musical interlude now. We're going to hear from Mika, a student from NYU. She played Maria Clara in the 2019 Noli Ming Tanghari at the opera production at the Cultural Center of the Philippines. She is going to sing Alleluia from Exulse Jubilate by Mozart in Ave Maria, an expert from Noli Ming Tanghari by Philippi De, De Leon and Ding Dong Fiel will accompany her on the piano. Please welcome Miko.
one. Uh, but, oh my gosh, if I had roses, I would throw them at my iPhone right now. We all miss Broadway so much. We miss live music, we miss opera, and to be blessed with that, your voice of an angel. Uh, Miko, I know you recently uh, dedicated your last performance I saw on your Facebook page um, to all the frontliners, and uh, it was it, it is such a sacrifice that all of them had to make in order to care for everyone during this pandemic. And we'll hear from some people who worked with them uh, very soon. But right now, joining us is Deputy Counsel General Tate, General Kerwin Tate, who is going to say a, a few words uh, here from our uh, counsel, Counsel General Tate. Good evening, New York. Good morning to the fellow Filipinos in the Philippines. On behalf of the women and men of the Philippine Consulate General in New York, I wish to join the country of our Philippines, Filipinos everywhere, and the entire Christian kingdom here on earth in celebrating 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. I was struck one time when I went to one of the ports and saw for myself a reproduction of the boats that Ferdinand Magellan and his crews took when they decided to circumnavigate the world. I was surprised and stunned by how small these boats were. And I thought to myself that they must have been truly brave to be going out to the ocean in watercraft so tiny by today's standards. And yet they persevered and they managed on March 16, 1521 to arrive on the Philippine shores and celebrate mass there. I do not know if the priests who celebrated that mass knew the effect of what they were doing, but they must have imbibed the spirit of what is stated in the gospel of Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of time. Like the proverbial seed that fell on fertile ground, that message bloomed in the hearts of the Filipinos and the Filipino people. And they gained adherents 20, 30, 100 fold until today we are the largest Christian nation in our part of the world. This is indeed a cause for celebration because this deep faith is what buoyed the Filipinos so, so many trials and tribulations. It has given us a sense of Christian culture that we have truly absorbed and which has cost us to become a generous, loving, and yes, very joyful people. It is a source of happiness for me that when I, whenever I come across Filipino communities everywhere in the world, I always see that Filipinos celebrate their fiesta, not just as occasions of getting together with other Filipinos, but as occasions for us to give praise and thanksgiving to the God who has always been watching over us 
and for the hope of the salvation that he has promised to us. I give thanks to the organizers of this event, to Dr. Angie Cruz, maraming salamat po. And I must say that as someone who is following after the speeches of the Pope and Cardinal Tagle, you have given me an incredible burden and including a performance from Ryan Kayabyab, our national artist for music. How can anyone actually keep up with such a dazzling array of talent? So um, I thank you nevertheless for giving this poor representative of the uh, Philippine government an opportunity to join in this momentous, happy occasion of marking five centuries of Christian faith in the Philippines. As a former seminarian who was uh, educated in the Holy Rosary Minor Seminary in Bicol, it is a great source of pride and pleasure for me to be joining all the Filipinos throughout the world and, and the entire Christian kingdom in this celebration. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Hallelujah to our Lord. Thanks be to God for this 500 years of uh, Christian faith. And we hope to continue this celebration throughout the coming years. Salamat po. Good job, Deputy Council Tate. You're second to none. You are second to none. That was a wonderful and heartfelt uh, uh, speech. We're going to uh, now pray a psalm, Psalm 138, with Dr. Laura Garcia. She is our co-host, and she's here on our Zoom. Um, Dr. Garcia is a nurse educator at NYU and the College of Mount St. Vincent, the alma mater of the late President Corazon Aquino. And she is the New York chair for NAFA, the National Federation of Filipino American Associations. Hi, Laura. Hi, Nina. Thank you. Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. For your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord, for all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's ways, for the glory of the Lord is very great. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. Your faithful love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. Thank you so much, Laura. That was so wonderful. And you're just such a bright spirit always. Um, I, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, uh, an incredible international concert pianist, um, musical author, Raul Sunico. His career spans 40 years of solo performances and over 50 album recordings. Uh, he is the Dean of the Music Department of St. Paul's College and the former president, president of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. And he also was brought to Pittsburgh by my mother and father to play a concert many years ago. Uh, we are so lucky to have with us uh, Raul Sanico. Thank you. 
wonderful to hear from Rose and Nico, really a national treasure. And we are celebrating such a jubilee. And what would it be without hearing from uh, somebody right here in the city who always supports of so much diversity. We're lucky to be joined by uh, Rabbi Joshua Stanton of the East End Temple. He's known as Rabbi Josh. You may have seen him on uh, CNN or in a documentary or read him in as many uh, syndicated uh, writings. Uh, he was recently on um, CNN, I think with Wolf Blitzer talking about you know, how we keep the faith uh, during the pandemic. And uh, you know, we know your time is val valuable Rabbi Josh and we thank you for hanging in here for our um, centennial celebration. So take it away, Rabbi Josh Stanton. Thank you. First and foremost, as we would say in Hebrew, Mazal Tov, congratulations on this momentous occasion. I want to read from Proverbs 3. And Proverbs 3 refers to the Torah, to the Bible as a tree of life for all who hold fast to it. And in this case, to the Filipino and Filipino American communities. Et chaim he la machazikim ba ve tom chea me ushar de rachea dar genoam ve chol nativoteha Shalom, Hashivenu Adonai, Elecha Venashuva, Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem. It is a tree of life for those who hold fast to it, and all of its supporters are happy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. And then juxtaposing this with Lamentations 5, return us to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. My dear friends, it has been a privilege being with you. Congratulations on this momentous occasion. Thank you, thank you. There I was talking about being muted again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rabbi Josh. You always bring such, you know, uh, such, your mission has always been connecting with people uh, from different backgrounds. And, and we applaud your work uh, on social justice um, as a leader in our city. And thank you for taking the time. Um, we would love uh, to introduce you now to our Muslim brothers and sisters who are also joining in our celebration, Muhammad Numan. Mbayabaya is the world champion Holy Quran reader from the Bangsa Aranam in Mindanao in the southern part of the Philippines, and he will recite a verse from the Holy Quran. <laughs>
I'm so entranced by their music. I put my mute on because I've got the kids coming up to me and asking me things like, can I open this mango? Yes, you can have the mango. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Angie Cruz, who put this wonderful event together for us. Um, she is, uh, you know, she's a tireless advocate for all things Filipino. She was so instrumental with uh, NALDEF, and she is the founder of, of Spirituality in the Workplace. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Dr. Angie Cruz. Thank you, Nina. Thank you very much. But before I say my piece, I think let's hear from Loida first. She prepared some words for our um, for our friends. Loida? And thank you for bringing us together. Yes, I did prepare some words. 500 years ago, Fernando Magallanes and his crew set anchor in the island of Mactan in Cebu. Spain's King Charles was very clear in his instructions to Magallanes. For God, for gold, for glory. And thus began Christianity brought, brought by the Spanish colonizers with all its benefits and advantages, including its corresponding abuses. The faith as we now practice, and that strengthens us as Christians, enable us to believe that God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. How positive and compassionate and strengthening is that belief. And therefore, 500 years later, Filipinos all over the world are known for their deep faith, kindness, adaptability, compassion, Joe and to light how the front frontliner Filipino nurses, doctors, medical technicians are the worst hit among others, suffering disproportionate number of deaths because they remain true to their profession. Back to the 350 years of Spanish rule in the Philippines, established the Napoleonic Code on civil and criminal matters, bringing a unified system of law. It produced art, music, literature in the Spanish language, which became the method of communication of the 7,641 islands that comprised Las Islas Filipinas. It introduced the spirituality of the Benedictines, ora et labora, pray and work, the Jesuits ad maiorem dei gloriam for the greater glory of God. The Augustinians, victoria veritatis es caritas, love conquers all. The Dominicans, laudare benedicere piadicare, to praise, to bless, and to preach. And the Franciscans, pax et bonum, peace and the good. This is spirituality infused the faith, the practice, and the character of 85% of our people. Sadly, because of the, the, because also the Spanish colonial rule did not have the check and balance of the Spanish government being 100,000 miles away, abuse of power and unchecked injustice also characterized those 350 years. It includes the marginalization of the non-Christians because Spain was never able to conquer the Muslim Filipinos in the South and the other indigenous tribes that still exist in our country. The underbelly of Christianity brought from Spain brought with it the corresponding racism that is systemic in the European culture. It is not part and parcel of Christianity, but it is also due to the contradiction of Christianity and the actual unjust practices during those ensuing 350 years that the Filipino people revolted against Spain. <clears throat> However, 
the faith of Christianity brought 500 years ago remain in the hearts and minds of our people. With our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who embraces our Muslim and Jewish brothers and sisters, including our Lumads, the Tiboli, Maranao, Magandanao, Tausug, and other indigenous tribes, we believe that as Filipinos, we continue to follow our Lord Jesus Christ's command 2,000 years ago. Love one another as I have loved you. At the present moment, our brothers and sisters in the Philippines are undergoing a trial of faith and intense suffering because of the abuses and shameless corruption of those in power. As our Lord in the temple drove away, the vendors and money changers with indignation because they have made the temple of God a den of thieves. So should we drive away the corruption and total lack of compassion that exists now in what Jose Rizal called Perla del Mal del Oriente, Pearl of the Ocean. Let us humble ourselves before God and pray for more servant leaders like Vice President Lenny Robredo, servant leaders who have the courage to truly serve our people, especially the poor and the marginalized among us, not for personal gain, but for the common good. May our Lord inspire all of us to continue to pursue righteousness, justice, and peace until the Philippines shine once again like a pearl of great price, precious in our eyes and in the eyes of God. Thank you. Thank Lord, you, Lord, Lord, as you can, you can, if you don't, you can't tell why she was one of the first Filipino women to pass uh, the New York bar without ever having studied law in the United States, has gone on to lead a multinational firm, uh, TLC Beatrice, founded the Filipino American Association of National Federation, co-founded the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund and US Pinoys for Good Governance, and is just all around, uh, just a wonderful philanthropist and icon. And you know, as we celebrate five centuries a kin centennial. I can't think of anyone better to talk about shining like a pearl because you certainly shine for, for all of us in all of your endeavors and all of your philanthropy and all of your hard work. I, I made the mistake of being invited to uh, a very small celebration with two other people during the pandemic at uh, the home of Mrs. Lewis. And I took a bite of my salad before we prayed. And I was eating the salad as she said, let's pray. And I was trying to chew it down because she's always put God first. You've always put the Lord first. And you always have a gentle reminder to remind us that we should put God first. And I, I, I hid my salad. I swallowed it and I continued to pray. And I, I, would, I will never for the rest of my life eat before I allow the hostess or host of our dinner party to, to say a prayer as you always do. You always put God first. And, and someone who also does that is the, um, the co-host of tonight. Thank you for all you do, Loida. The co-host tonight, Dr. Angie Cruz, she puts God first. She went on a mission to, I think you went to Israel and um, to Lourdes with my mom. You're always encouraging everyone and all of us to be better and do better, uh, Dr. Angie Cruz. Thank you, thank you. Just a minute. Did I? Am I muted? No. No, we can okay. hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. You are precious. Actually, let me let I, I want to let you into in my I want to tell you a secret. I really felt deeply in my heart that we had to celebrate the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines here in New York. Thank God I found kindred souls who felt the way I did. I shared my idea with my dear friend, Loida, who got as excited as I was. 
So she is uh, really, she does not recall the host because she didn't want to use any organization. So, but she is still ex officio member of the host committee. And then Edwin Joshua and Jerry Siebel joined us and invited their friends to be part of the program. Of course, Laura Garcia also agreed to be part of the host committee. Thank you to all who spoke, to all who prayed with us, to all who entertained us with music. We all saw them, heard them, loved them. But other people work behind the scenes. Ambassador Cecil Rebong, the former Consul General in New York, approached the Philippine Consulate for us. Father Roger Landry of the Holy See Mission helped us too in requesting the message from Monsignor Katya. And of course, our wonderful, wonderful MC Nina Pineda and our uh, Zoom master, without whom we could not have had this Zoom virtual celebration. Last but not least, I thank all of you who joined us. You just proved that really deep in the heart of every Filipino is that love of God, that appreciation of our faith, of our Christian faith. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all those who joined us, for everybody who helped make this celebration something to be remembered as it should be, because it is the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. So let us end this with Nina. Jo we will end it with uh, Joseph. Uh, I think Jerry uh, Jerry is going to say something on your oh, yeah, yeah, uh, please, Jerry, please, Jerry. And Josie. Go, Jerry. Jerry is so supportive all the time at every uh, event, at any celebration, any gala. You give of your time and you open your heart and your wallet to uh, every single cause that is, comes across your desk. Go ahead, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you, Angie. Hello, everybody. On behalf of Edwin, Josue, Mike uh, Bautista, and Friends of the Philippines Society USA, Inc. On, in short, we are called Friends, and we are happy to celebrate this momentous event. And, you know, as your brothers and friends in Christ. Pope Francis said, communion is div um, diversity. For us, we, it means that uh, diversity is unity, equality, and uh, inclusion. God created us, the world, and all human races. Friends hope to serve the community and it is our organization's uh, mission to serve and create a better community through love, joy, and peace. Mabuhay and salamat po. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Edwin. I love your, your background. Uh, you Thank win. You, you win. With oh. the painting in the background. <laughs> Thank Gorgeous. you. Gorgeous. You know, artist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, uh, we're going to hear from Dr. Joseph Legaspi, the music director at St. Peter's University in New Jersey, who will sing a St. Francis prayer. But, um, you know, the Wi Fi is a little funny sometimes. So, to make sure this was a great performance, we have the, the uh, video. <laughs> Where there is hatred 
Dr. Joseph Legaspi, oh my gosh, that was incredible. Dr. Legaspi corrected me when I said uh, he uh, called him a father, a priest, and, and now getting to see him, um, I can see why some people will be celebrating that he is not in the priesthood, given that he is so uh, guapo there. Uh, and I'm Thank sure you. you're enjoying uh, St. Peter's. And we cannot wait, when this is over and we're out of this and we can all celebrate again together, we are yeah. going to have to have a concert with uh, you and Miko. We'll we'll see if we can, who else we can get that's local because that was absolutely incredible. I, I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for joining our celebration and concluding this wonderful celebration. To the host committee that worked hard to get those videos is a feat, and the big get, of course, of the huge musical stars of our country is no small task. So I congratulate the host committee. Pope Francis said to the Filipinos around the world, I want to thank you for the joy you bring the whole world and to our Christian communities. And I think that we can all say that Filipinos do bring joy to everyone they meet. We've been in a difficult situation because of the frontline healthcare workers. And I know everyone here on the Zoom watching locally and we're having people type in from around the world. We welcome you, all the people that join in from around the world to say a prayer for them and go forth. We have another 500 years, hopefully, to celebrate Christianity in the Philippines. For all of you who joined us, I'm Nina Pineda with WABC TV. I wish you a safe and good evening. Good night. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nina. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs>